Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to be doing some latency testing to compare analog video with DJI HD FPV and HD0 or SharkBite to try and answer the question which of these systems has the best latency and what is the true latency of all of these different systems. I'm going to be taking you through the test setup that I used, showing you the results, and also I'm going to be showing you some high speed video captured of all of the different systems to allow you to make up your own mind as to which you think performed the best and also to provide some context for all of these numbers that I'm going to be sharing with you. There's no time to waste, so let's get into it. Let me take you through the hardware that I used for this testing. So for the analog system, I used a pretty inexpensive Turbo Wing Cyclops FPV camera connected to a 200 milliwatt VTX, and that was being received by a set of Omway Commander V1 goggles. For the HD0 system, I was using the Runcam Micro HD0 camera connected to the SharkBite TX5R1 VTX, and that was being received by the SharkBite RX5.1 goggle module. And then over HDMI, that was connected into the same set of Omway Commander V1s. For the DJI system at 120 frames per second, I used the original DJI FPV camera connected to the air unit, and that was being received by a set of DJI V1 goggles. For the DJI system running at 60 frames per second, I was using a Cadex Nebula Nano camera connected to a Cadex Vista, and that was being received by, again, a set of DJI V1 goggles. This is a schematic of the test setup that I used to capture the video that you're going to see later. I have a battery, 3.3 volts, connected through a switch to two LEDs in parallel. Now connecting the LEDs like this will ensure that when I push this button, both LEDs will light up at exactly the same moment. I have one LED taped just above the screen in the goggles, and I have the other LED taped directly in front of the FPV camera. So what you'll see in the video is the LED above the goggle screen light up, and then a moment later, you'll see the goggle screen change as the image from the camera comes through. And by measuring the delay between that LED turning on and the image in the screen changing, we can assess the latency of each FPV system. The high-speed camera that I'm using is a Sony high-speed camera, and it's set up to capture the image from one screen of the goggles and the LED just above it. I want to make it clear at this point that all of this testing was done under ideal conditions for all the systems. The transmitter and receiver were right next to each other on the bench. Now the latency for analog and HD0 or SharkBite will not change with distance or interference. They are fixed latency systems. The latency for the DJI system is going to increase with decreasing signal to noise ratio. And that's due to increasing retransmissions to recover any lost data. I'm going to do a follow up video to quantify this effect. So make sure you get subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that one. I did each test separately and then composited all four tests together into one video. I synchronized the videos such that the blue LED just above the goggle screen lights up at exactly the same moment for all the videos, and then I put a time code in the top left to show you the number of frames that have elapsed. Now the video has been shot at 960 frames per second, which means that each frame of the high-speed video is approximately 1.04 milliseconds. Now, why did I shoot at 960 frames per second rather than 1,000, for example? Well, 960 frames per second provides exactly 16 frames of high-speed video per frame of 60 frames per second video, or 8 frames of high-speed video per frame of 120 frames per second video. Now, having that frame rate synchronized should minimize the problem of the high speed footage moving in and out of sync with the FPV video and potentially introducing some variability. I noticed that the LCD elements in the displays used in this test do take some time to switch and that's visible in the high speed footage. 
The DJI goggles take about 4 milliseconds, and the Onway Commander V1s that I'm using take about 10 milliseconds. I decided that I would take all timings from the moment the pixels start to change to minimize the effect of the different displays on the latency measurement. I am going to do a follow up video on the performance of different display technologies, LCD versus OLED. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. If you watch the videos closely, you will notice that both the analog and the HD0 and SharkBite systems update the screen line by line, scanning top to bottom. And each scan takes almost exactly 1 60th of a second. DJI renders a whole frame of video into a frame buffer and then updates the whole screen at once very rapidly. It's hard to know exactly how fast, but it's, you know, just a couple of milliseconds. Now I would encourage you to watch the video a few times and make up your own mind about the latency of all the different systems. But here are my results. Now I had synchronized all of the videos so that the LEDs, the blue LEDs, all turned on in frame one. The analog screen registered its first bright line in frame three. And by frame 12, the SharkBite system had registered its first bright line as well. At frame 19, I think the analog screen had completed its first field or half resolution update. And by 23 frames, the DJI 120 frames per second system had registered its first bright pixels, but it wasn't a full field update because only about half the frame had become bright. After 25 frames, the DJI 60 frames per second system had also done a approximately half field update. Again, not a full field. By 28 frames, SharkBite completes a full frame update. So it is the first digital system to complete a full frame update in my testing. Only a few frames later, frame 31, DJI 120 frames per second also completes a full frame. So there's not much in it between these two systems, about three milliseconds or so. By 35 frames, the analog screen completes its full frame. So two full fields and 41 milliseconds, the DJI 60 frames per second system finally completes its full frame. So what does this mean for the latency of these different systems? Well, it depends if you're talking about full frame latency or full field latency. If we start with full field latency, we can see that the analog system is the first system to complete a full field and it takes a little bit less than 20 milliseconds to do it. The next system to complete a full field is the SharkBite system, which does it in a little bit under 30 milliseconds. The DJI system at 120 frames per second is only slightly behind SharkBite. It's about 32 milliseconds. And the DJI 60 frames per second system is the last one to complete a full field at about 43 milliseconds. But for analog, a full field is only half resolution. So it's only 240 lines. So another way of looking at latency could be full frame latency. Now, full frame latency is when you're getting the full resolution of all the different systems. And what we find here is that SharkBite is the fastest system to full frame. Followed by DJI 120, followed by analog, and then finally DJI 60. You'll notice that for the digital systems, the full field and full frame latency are the same. But for the analog system, the full frame latency is much more than the full field latency. 
So let's talk a bit more about why that is. The digital systems are progressive scan at 60 or 120 frames per second. And with progressive scan, the whole frame is updated every time, all of the pixels. Analog video isn't transmitted like that. Analog video is interlaced with 60 fields or 30 frames per second. In analog video, each field is half the vertical resolution, which is 240 lines for NTSC. And it's sent as odd lines followed by even lines and then back to odd lines. And that means that you need to wait for two fields to get a full frame. And you get each field 60 times a second, and therefore you get each frame 30 times a second. Now, I think this really matters because if the object that you're looking to avoid that's coming into view is too small to be resolved in 240 lines of vertical resolution, for example, wires, branches, or foliage, you may very well need to wait for two field updates to see it. If, however, the object is large, you will be able to see it quite easily with only one field update. So when you're considering the latency of your system, you need to consider whether what you are looking for is going to be visible in a single field of analog video, or whether you're going to really need to wait for two fields before you see it. And to give you an example, here's an image of an analog video feed. There's lots of branches, there's some wires in there, there's some foliage. I don't think that a single field with only 240 lines of vertical resolution is going to be enough for me necessarily to see all the detail that I need to see in order to fly through this environment. And that means that in this type of environment, the latency of the analog system might actually be more than SharkBite or DJI at 120 frames per second. So what conclusions can we draw from this? I think that for objects that can be resolved with a vertical resolution of 240 lines, then analog video offers the lowest latency. So we're talking walls, thick branches, large, high contrast objects. These objects are typically going to be visible from further away anyway. So I think there's a question about how valuable that low resolution, low detail image really is. For objects that cannot be resolved with a vertical resolution of 240 lines, which is going to be a lot of things like branches and leaves and wires and stuff like that, but can be resolved with a vertical resolution of 480 lines or greater, then actually it's HD0 or SharkBite that offers the lowest latency. I think that these type of objects, wires, ghost branches, leaves, that sort of thing, are often the objects where latency matters most, particularly for freestyle. Now, I'm not a racing pilot, but I think that also the detail that's provided there could be valuable for racing as well. HD0 or SharkBite offers a consistent latency to full frame that is faster in my testing than DJI at 120 frames per second and significantly faster than DJI at 60 frames per second. And I think the reason that my testing is maybe a bit different to testing that's been done before is that because of that high speed video, I'm actually able to determine when each of the systems has done a full field update or a full frame update rather than just the first moment where some part of the screen goes bright. And I think that that is an important distinction that we need to make when we're talking about latency. Based on my understanding of the technology and my testing of these systems, my opinion is that HD0 or SharkBite outclasses all other systems from a latency perspective. It offers much more detail than a full frame of analog video in seven milliseconds less time. And that's definitely going to give a pilot more time to react to things like thin branches, leaves, wires, corners of race gates, and other small objects which wouldn't be visible or wouldn't be clearly visible in only 240 lines of resolution, which is what you would get with a full field update of analog. I expect that this extra detail, combined with the fixed latency of the system, 
is going to enable faster lap times than analog. And so I'm going to be using it in my upcoming state-of-the-art racing build, the AOS 5R HD. So get subscribed if you don't want to miss that. So that's my take on the results from this high-speed video latency testing. Let me know down in the comments what your reaction is to this data and whether it's made you change your mind about any of these systems. A big thank you to all of my patrons, without whom I couldn't have bought the high-speed camera that I used in this testing. If you like my work and would like to support me and more videos like this, please check out my Patreon. I'll put a link down in the video description. You can join from a few dollars a month and you'll get access to my Discord server and also some sneak peeks of the projects that I'm working on as well. That's all that I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.